man. LTBR daily on a Monday morning, 621, the weekend uh, after King of the Dot Season 1 kicked off. We're going to talk about a little bit of King of the Dot Season 1 for a little bit. A um, couple dope battles. So there's only supposed to be three battles on the card. Uh, only two of them went down. The third one went down later on off the stream. So we're going to have to watch the Saint battle later on whenever it drops. And we're going to get the decision later on with it. I think that's a little... I think it's a little bizarre. I think if any other league does a judge battle later and we find the decision later, we would riot. But, you know, I'm going to leave that alone. For the meantime, I want to talk about Stewie and Caustic and Cali's move in reverse live because, um, yo, man, Stewie and Caustic was a decent battle to set off uh, season one. It, it lacked some energy, but I got to be honest, like, I'm not 100% sure Caustic or Stewie were that enthused to write for each other. It kind of showed in the material. Um, Caustic definitely was flowing. He had really, he had a solid pace. It sounded like he like kind of was just under control. And he knows this is a marathon, right? There's going to be multiple battles in this season. This thing is going six months deep. So he's pacing himself. Stewie might, Stewie kind of got his feet wet. King of the Dot debut. Uh, one thing I would say to Stewie Newton, man, like, Rebuttaling is like is, is a very big risk to reward. And I'm not saying that you can't rebuttal. I'm just saying not everything needs a rebuttal. You know what I'm saying? Because starting off with a rebuttal that doesn't hit, it's like people, we, we've pa we're past the point where we're going to just credit you for freestyling because we have so many high-level rebuttalers out in the game that we're just not going to give you credit no more for just regularly freestyling. You know what I'm saying? Ten years ago, Hollow to Don and DNA could get away with some of the, the, the those strangest lines because it was made on the spot and we were cool with it. But now, like, you got people like A-Word scheming a whole rebuttal. You got people like Ill Will rebuttaling in the middle of the round. You got people like Chef Trez rebuttaling three, four, five times. Uh, the list goes on. Uh, you know, I'm, and I'm not saying Stewie's any of those guys, but, you know, sometimes rebuttaling can affect the momentum to your round. Battle didn't have the energy. Costa got the easy victory, 4-1 decision. Uh, but... Cali Smooth and Reverse Live. Did you see it? Did you guys get to see Cali Smooth and Reverse Live? That battle was fire. I'm not going to lie to you, Chief. I wasn't expecting that to be that good. Sue Surf Lawyer says it was fire. I saw the robbery. Uh, Cali's always good. Yeah, Cali's solid, man. Cali's pretty solid. Um, the reverse live though, man, uh, that third round says Savage Van Jaws. that third round by reverse live. Look, one thing about judge battles, I know people don't like to believe this concept that like a knockout round exists, but listen, if you're watching a battle for the first time and you're not going to get a chance to watch it back and you're only going to leave with the energy and the momentum it creates for you in that moment, then third round knockouts exist, bro. You can have a powerful bottom of the third round. That's so good, and especially if it's your best round or the best round of the battle, it might make me look back at one of the other two rounds and say, oh, even though this was close, I'm going to give it to you because you finished stronger. Bruh, Reverse Live was talking to Cali Smooth. I, I didn't expect this, bro. And then, like, what, what do you say What do you say to Cali Smooth about being white? He said, um, yeah, I know I'm a guest in this house, but I'll be damned if I haven't earned my spot for all the nights that I slept on the couch. When a white man is aware that he is a guest and he embraces it, it just makes things so much better. It makes things so much better. Cali did have a good first two rounds, so I'm not mad if you had Cali the first two, but Reverse Live did enough to snatch that to snatch that victory, man. No yo play, says CC. Especially after Juneteenth. A white man after Juneteenth letting it be known that he is a guest. Like, yeah, I'm a feel I'm feeling that. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling that. <laughs> the white man won Juneteenth weekend. <laughs> salute, salute, man. Thank you for the props. Thank you for the props. Nah, but shout out to King of the Dot season one. Um, there's still a lot of um stuff in the air with their season. I'm not really sure how the seeding's working. I'm not sure how the records come into play. I'm not sure who advances to the playoffs. Like, we're going to probably have Organic come on the show sometime soon to really break all the intricacies down. You guys know we don't like to report anything that we don't fully know. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at that for the meantime. And whenever we get Organic to spin the block on us, he's going to break 
everything down. You know what I'm saying? Um, salute to the judges, man, real quick, because uh, they had Lex, league owner, Lex Luthor, I battle. F fantastic uh, league owner, fantastic person in this culture. A1 judge. They got Showtime SP, my peer in media. You know what I'm saying? They got the ladies in media, too. They had Wing, and they had Boss Chick Rain. So, media's out here, you know what I'm saying? Um, don't be surprised if we've gotten offers to judge, you know what I'm saying? Don't be surprised. We probably have gotten offers to judge, but um, respectfully, I, I might have to decline that just because Sundays aren't my biggest availability day. And if their entire season's on a Sunday, I, I'm not going to multitask while watching a battle. It's unfair to the artist. Wing did her thing. Wing certainly did do her thing. Thank you for the props. Trichy Gotti. <laughs> Trichy Gotti, I appreciate that. Um, M4 says, seems like a point system for possible later battles, even losers. Yeah, it's possible. Maybe the point system could take into place. Maybe the level of performance. Um, I don't know, though. I don't want to speculate. I want to find out for directly from the horse's mouth. So, we'll leave King of the Season 1 there. Ooh. Almost took our background off. We'll leave King of the One Season there. Uh, Dree says, expanding media roles in battle rap. Yeah, it's important, man. It's important. But uh, I just want everybody to know, like, uh, I'm happy that media is more involved. Happy that media has this much of an influence. But I just want everybody to remember one thing. Like, the culture is the culture. Like, we're just here. We're just rotating inside of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, let's talk battle rap can end tomorrow and battle rap continues. You know what I'm saying? Any, any of us can end tomorrow and battle rap still continues. Like, we don't carry this culture. We just... We we're not the show. We just commentate on the show. We just co we just cover the show, you know. So I'm happy the media is getting more of a role, um, more recognition, more influence. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it still falls on the leagues, the battle rappers, the talent, the people putting it together. You know, I never want to ever be that guy that uh becomes too big and it's like it's, it's never about us. It's never about us. You know what I'm saying? So. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Heir to the Throne, man. Heir to the Throne's going down this weekend. Let's pull this up. Unfortunately, we lost one of the biggest battles on Heir to the Throne, man. But let's talk about it for a bit. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's shrink this up so that it could fit on the screen and all that. Um, briefly about Hustle and, and Miss Hustle and Coffee Brown. It will not be going down. Miss Hustle announced that she had an accident. Um... I don't know the exact date of it. It wasn't that Thursday or Friday, though. But she announced that she will not be battling because of the accident in her leg due to an injury. Coffee Brown's asking for a replacement opponent. I don't think anybody wants to step up. Coffee Brown is loaded, all right? Coffee Brown has rounds for days. And um, speedy recovery to Miss Hustle. Hopefully that battle does get rescheduled. We all wanted to see it. All of us wanted to see it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like Cece said, thank God her and her daughter is okay first. Um... In battle rap, you, usually when we get cancellations, right, when we hear matches are not going down, we get really upset. We get really disappointed. We're like, oh, you know what I'm saying? We want to we wanna blame the lead. We want to blame the battler. But if something's not happening, it's for a reason always, you know what I'm saying? So I, like, it, I, I wish we can try to handle things a little better sometimes as a coach when we don't hear battles. Like, I hope our first question is to ask, is the battler okay Instead of getting upset. But, I mean, that's just asking for a lot of battle rap. I can't expect that. You know what I'm saying? All of us are human. So, let's read through this chat, man. Dame Time says, real people, real problems. Treat you God. He says, I seen somebody battle in a wheelchair. Facts. Um, Juwan says, these battlers be cap. You know what, Juwan? Sometimes they do, bro. But, like, I, I can't be that person to say that. You can say that. I'm not going to be the one to say that. I'll look crazy saying it. But I don't mind you saying it. Um, somebody tell Hustle if she can't beat Coffee, she definitely can't beat Hitman. Okay. Shuni and Gaddis will be ass on this card. Mark my words, says Hardcore Flavor. Yo, take a screenshot of that, y'all. Get the receipts on that one. That's that's a bold-ass take. That's a bold-ass take. Let me see if I can pull that message back up. We need a screenshot of that shit. That message was crazy. All right, I just brought it back. If y'all brought it back, upvote that. Take a screenshot, crop it, hold on to it. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying hold him accountable. So that if he's right, you know what I'm saying? He's a genius. If he was wrong, uh, you know. 
we know, we know what's up, man. But let's throw let's throw it to you guys because the, the chat is always most important. The people are most important. Heir to the throne. We only got four battles left. This is kind of like a Queen of the Ring super fight when you look at it. You got Gaddis versus uh, Official. You got Shuni versus Vixen. You have uh, obviously the headliner Casey versus Forty, and um, E Heart versus First Lady Flames. What do you guys have as your favorite battle out of these four? Which battle are you looking most forward to that's still left on the card? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it while I share this broadcast. Too many important matches to be a super fight. <laughs> You wrong for that, man. Flames says hardcore flavor. Shuni Gaddis says yes. Vixen's about to catch a body. I don't know, man. Don't put that pressure on Vixen, man. You know what I'm saying? Do not put that pressure on Vixen. Let me copy this. Vixen versus Casey is fire, says Dree. Yo, Dree, let me let me talk to you about that, Dree, real quick. Vixen and Casey have an assignment on this card. Their assignment is to not fumble the pack, all right? Because that battle, to me, could be a Summer Madness battle. And if not Summer Madness, at the very most, a Queen of Ring headliner somewhere down the line. They have an objective. Casey has an objective to get her respect and beat 40 and finally prove everybody that she's here to stay, right? Because every, every single win she has, people downplay it. And... You guys are expecting Vixen to walk on Shuni. I'm not sure that's. I'm not sure that's gonna happen. Shuni is making her caffeine debut. She she's polished. She's been here for a long time for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So, but they both have an assignment. I don't know if they'll walk away with clear victories, but they need to come out there with good performances. That's a fact. I don't care if you have 40 beating Casey, but we need Casey to be fire so that. Vixen and Casey can be fire, and that demand continues to boil up. Because I will say this much. The two times they've shared a card between Kings and Queens 1 and um, Watch the Throne 4, I, I said this. The The ladies panel said this. Vixen outperformed Casey. Vixen outperformed Casey and had better battles than Casey. In that small sample size, they were together. And you can't even be like, oh, well, those were Vixen's first two battles. for the No, they had the same amount of time to write. The second card was 30 days apart. They had 30 days later to be on Watch the Throne 4. And Vixen and Flames put on one of the best battles of the year. And one of the best female battles of the year, too, if you if you make a separate list for them. You know what I'm saying? So, I look forward to both of them having good performances to, to increase the demand of their battle. Let's keep reading the chat, though. 09 Bull Sense says, Summer Madness... Soldier boy, some of madness, soldier boy voice, some of madness. Hey, bro, listen, man, people making their debuts, bro. That's it. People, we're, 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 we're rotating the rosters, we're bringing out the new talent. People are making history. This past them had the most debuts it's ever had. When you look at some of the ladies that made their debuts in the past, Miss Hustle, Jazz, uh, Official. You know what I'm saying? They they were prominent in their career, but if you go back to 2013, 2014, 2015, they didn't have that many battles. So, in fact, they probably have less work back then than these ladies have now. So, that's something to just consider. It's if it's on a stage that's set up if it's it's on a stage that's set up for Casey, says Gregory something, okay? 09 Bull Sense says, not two people last battle, not two people who last battle they got bodied. Kate, yeah, that's true. I feel you because Vixen lost to Loso and Casey lost to Geechee. I hear you. I hear you. But that's them losing to, they're losing to men. All right. Now they're in their arena against their, like, their tax bracket, right? They're battling the women. It's one thing when you're losing to, to top tier, high level quality male battle rappers, right? But now it's like, now you're in your circuit. Like, let's see what happens there. Two Bar Dash has already beat 40, says yes. How about this, 40? Uh, how about this, yes? 40 hasn't won a round against a Bar Dash. You can say that. You can literally say that. And more importantly, you can say she's choked every time she's been in front of a Bar Dash. All right? Like, those are actual facts. And there is a little Bardashian curse there that she has to mentally overcome. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes these mental roadblocks become big enough for people to not 
uh, conquer, not overcome. So I don't know. You know, that there is a real thing between 40 and the Bardashians there that she has to figure out. Casey is a scary matchup for 40. The energy gap will be noticeable. That's a really good point. That's a really, really good point. Up to, uh, update guy says 40 ain't went around against O. I mean, she might have. I've seen a lot of people say she didn't, but she did choke. So she choked against everybody that she's been in front of. So that's that's no bueno. Cool Whip says 39 bars is in trouble. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. 40's pen is too much for Casey. If she don't choke, she clearly wins. See, but then, when you guys start penalizing the people that chokes in front of Casey? Because there's people that are saying if 40 doesn't choke, she's going to win. What happens if 40 chokes? I don't think she will. I think she's well-rested. She had enough time off to not choke. But what if she does? At the very least, she is stumble-prone, right? And I know some of you guys here really critical on stumbles. So, like... 40's pen is better, but Casey's energy is better. This should be an interesting battle, says CeCe. Music Master says, year, year, what up? Let me pop out this chat right here. Is 40 the female Sue Surf? I think 40 is just 40. I don't think there's any comparisons. Energy is cool, but Miss Miami got energy too, and she be losing. I think this might be a preference battle, says Cece. Um, I'll give a quick take on all these four battles, and then we'll move on from Heir to the Throne. So, First Lady Flames and E-Heart, I love the battle. I know they've gotten a little bit of style comparisons just from... Um, the way they write, how laid back they are, how they have a good pen. However, however, I truly believe that in this entire card, hunger is going to outmatch status and experience because First Lady Flames has, she's been in these caffeine rooms, all right? She might have lost to JC clearly, but she put up a fight. When Hart lost to Shine clearly, she she looked traumatized. Like, th that was bad. That set her back. Um, and I'm sure she has some motivation to redeem herself from Summer Impact Reloaded, to redeem herself from the K-Shine performance. But you cannot match the hunger of somebody that is dying to be at that status as opposed to somebody that's trying to maintain it. Like, I just don't think those two things equate. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is somebody that's... There's a difference between somebody that's trying to get a raise at a job and somebody that wants a fucking job. You know what I'm saying? This person that wants the job is hungry. This person is applying left and right, day-to-day, -day, interviews, follow-ups, emails, resumes, cover letters, reference sheets, recommendations. And this person that wants the raise is just like, oh, I'll stay an hour late at the office sometimes. Uh, you know, I'll answer this email tomorrow. Like, it's just not the same. I just I just can't compare the people that that, that is trying to get somewhere as opposed to somebody that's trying to maintain it. Um, I have First Lady Flames with the hunger to beat E-Heart. Uh, Shuni and Vixen. I want to point this out, right? Shuni, 2019, made a made a made the source list, made a top battle rapper list. She made a couple lists because she was the most active at the time. She was getting plates all over small leagues, RBE. Um, she battled on Queen of Ring, I think once or twice that year. So she's she found a way to kept, keep herself active. But when you stop to go back and watch all of those battles... You realize, like, a lot of those battles, she, like, she stumbles in some of them. Um, some of the bigger ones, she she's lost, like the old red one, the shotgun sugar one. Um, I don't know what to expect from Shuni in a big moment. You know what I'm saying? I respect her for who she is. She's very consistent. She's been here for a while. She has that presence. She can definitely put pressure on Vixen. But this is another case where it's like, hold on, I've seen Vixen go crazy in these caffeine rooms on DNA, on Flames. And even though Loso had a fucking moment on her, she still fought back. She might have lost, but she didn't quit. She did not quit whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? She put up a lot of effort in a losing opportunity. So I, I'm not so sure that we get the cleanest shuni. I do think her caffeine debut will be motivating to her. But will it be more motivating than Vixen trying to come back from that Loso loss? And Vixen, who has already been on top of the world, female bat uh, female battle of the year, woman of the year last year? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. Look, LTBR guys, LTL, LTBR update guy says, I'm compromised. I'm picking all the new talent over the vets. And the truth of the matter is, yeah, maybe I am. Because, like, 
I've seen a lot of these newer talents, people that are trying to establish their career, have this desire and getting these opportunities. And the vets, like, let's keep it a buck. Like, unless they get bodied, their status doesn't change. Ehart doesn't stop being one of the greatest female battle rappers in the world, right? Official doesn't stop being one of the greatest female battle rappers in the world. Like, nothing's going to change their careers at this point unless they take a devastating loss. Unless Official does, like, what she did against Cortez or Hart looks like she does on Summer Impact or against K-Shine. Like, they're not going to take massive dips. And even then, their dips are, like, amongst... Like, they're so elite already. They have such a great body of work for being in this game for a decade plus. Their only comparisons are them. So at this point, it's just like, ah, maybe I rank Hart and, and Jazz over Hart, uh, over 40, over... Like, that's it. They, they, they're they not going anywhere. So if they lose, nothing changes for them. These girls here, they have to win. They have to win to keep advancing. So let's read some of these messages. Tata says she was fire in her battle. She did rebuttal in the second after messing it up in the first in regards to Vixen. Hardcore Flavor says, which female this weekend will pull a Danny Myers? Hey, look, you know what? I, I want to say that's a negative comment, but every weekend you get somebody that kind of just drops the ball, right? It's a, it's inevitable. It's inevitable to always get one person to drop the ball. So hopefully nobody nobody does that. But, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not inconceivable. It's not inconceivable. So I'm not going to put that energy on anybody. I'm not even going to guess. I'm not even going to say your name, but... By the track record, he is correct to ask that question. I, I got to keep it a buck. Yes, says there's definitely be a changing of the guards at Queen of the Ring. Drastically, bro. Somebody is going to leave that night, like, with a whole new reputation, with a whole new reputation, with a whole new outlook on their career. And we're going to overreact to it. And I'm going to overreact to it. Because I love to overreact to things, all right? This is what I'm here for. This is what y'all here for. To watch me overreact. Y'all tell me I'm overreacting. I tell y'all, y'all bugging. I break it down. Y'all be like, well, friends, maybe you kind of right. And then two weeks later, I was wrong. This is this is what we're here for. This is what we're here for. Yeah, we are doing an LTBR after dark on Saturday. We're doing an after party. Um... I don't know if we should do an all-ladies after party, though. I don't know. Maybe CC and some of the sisters, you know. Maybe CC, Tata, somebody else pull up, you know what I'm saying, make it a ladies' night. I don't know. We'll see what the we'll see what the temperature is. I, I kind of like the idea of a ladies' night after party, you know what I'm saying? I kind of like that, so we'll see. Um, what other battles? I talked about Flames, Vixen Shuni, um, 40 Casey. I talked about 40 Casey plenty of times already, but... I think eventually, at some point, the disrespect for Casey has to stop. You know what I'm saying? I think Casey's due for one explosive performance. You know what I'm saying? Like, she beat Twerk, she beat Prep, and everybody says, ah, well, they choked. Right? So, nobody gives her the full credit. Then Geechee, she loses to Geechee, but Geechee God is one of the best in the world. Like, losing to Geechee God is not a bad thing, guys. All right? Um, 40... I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think 40 will, will do bad. I don't think 40 will choke. I don't think she'll stumble. I think she's had enough time to be clean. But I do think at some point the KCJ disrespect has to stop. At some point it has to end. The trend has to end. You know what I'm saying? If anybody here trades stocks, trades currencies, has money in crypto, you guys know for a fact trends come to an end eventually. The KCJ disrespect has to come to an end at some point. And it's going to probably come to an end this Saturday. This Saturday is going to be the time you get a fire Casey and you finally say to yourself, I got to put some respect on her name. So, Reggie says, I doubt it. <laughs> Casey got to get her bounce back. Justin says, Casey has been okay more than good. Stop playing with Texas. I love Casey, but she's losing this one. Hey, look, that's fine. If y'all picking 40, that's fine. Just please. Keep the energy if the results do not match your predictions. I've seen you guys have twisted your words a lot of times. Y'all thought y'all thought Casey couldn't beat Prep. And she did that. And and then there was no props for it afterwards. There was zero props for it. I seen it. I seen it. You know what I'm saying? Alright, man. Let's uh let's let's move on from here to the throne. Another card going down this same weekend, though. And I really, really, really like this card, man. Shouts to Battle Academy for, for their No Remorse card. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, it's supposed to be headlined by Reed Dallas and Danny Myers in a one-round battle. Um, not 100% sure this battle's going down. I've been hearing in these streets that the battle is canceled. Um, I can't confirm it. The league hasn't said anything. I, I've, I contacted Danny Myers. I haven't gotten a response. So, chat, if any of you guys know that this battle is canceled, let me know. Send me the source so that I can report on this because I don't know if it is or it isn't. Um... Plus, I also seen Danny Myers' book somewhere else on the same date. So, I don't... I don't know what's happening. I don't know. I, I, I can't say that I know, to be, to be honest with you. But the rest of the card is fire. Let me pull up the card right here. Alright, man. Obviously, Reed Dolls and Danny Myers are one-round battle. If it goes down, dope. If it doesn't, um, we'll know what happened. It probably got rescheduled or canceled. But A-Ward versus Shotgun Shug. Talk to me about this battle, y'all. I want to hear what y'all think out there. Let's throw it to the people. Mr. A-Ward, A-Wizzle versus Shotgun Shug. What do you have to say about this one? A-Ward, 30, 30, 30. Shug's getting bodied. Tata says, I like it. Shug just can't stop dying, says Briz Mula. Lord have mercy. This is the same day as Hair to the Throne, Hardcore Flavor, June 26th. The exact same day. I think the same time, too. Suge hasn't won since Obama's administration. Damn. Since 2016? Damn. Suge's only win. Oh, I missed that message. I got I to gotta get that one back. Nobody's paying attention to that card then. I think people will be in the building for it. I think we'll definitely hear some rumblings on it, but it's just, it's, it's on the same day as a caffeine car. You're probably always going to pick the free stream over the paid stream in that situation. Four times says, I'll give updates. He'll be in the building. There you go. Um, if Suge loses the coin toss, he won't win anything that day. Yikes. Um, listen, man, I, I, I've been hearing some things about A-Ward's material for Shotgun Suge. I hear A Ward is trying to make a statement because he has kind of a little URL schedule. He's got Shug, he's got Fonz, he's got Ryder. He's trying to make a statement with all these battles. So expect A Ward to be extremely fire. My concern is that A Ward's going to pull a Danny Myers, give Shug all this fire. And when he's in front of Rosenberg Raw, I'm not saying he's going to choke, but the bigger moment, he won't have the artillery that he needs. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I, we'll jump to Max out, too, in the near future. But two weeks apart, Shotgun Shug and Rosenberg Raw, like, I think the priority is Rosenberg Raw, right? Max out, two, Atlanta, 1,000-plus people in the room. Like, that has to be the priority. I know Suge may be a bigger name, may have accomplished more than Raw, but at this moment of their career, Raw is the more valuable battle rapper, without a doubt. I know people are saying Rosenberg Raw isn't that hard to beat. However, Justin, I want to say this. I think Rosenberg Ross' performance against Show Off was good. I think it was magnified a little bit because of how bad Show Off was. But I believe it's going to give Rosenberg Ross this irrational confidence. He's going to go on that stage, and he's going to write his heart out. And he's probably going to have one of the best performances of his career that we probably might never see again. And Award has to Award doesn't have to necessarily beat Raw, but Award has to be better than his ill will performance because now that's the standard. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's now the standard for for A Ward on Max Out on RBE that it will battle. That's the ceiling. So you have to match that or exceed it. <laughs> and Rosenberg Raw has a has a better assignment to just be consistent with his level of a performance. I, I think it's a tough. I think it's a really tough match for Ward, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, Chief. I'm not gonna lie to you. For a lot of other circumstances beyond talent. Raw is a face of a league. He is. That he is. He's been winning. We can't discredit it. Rosenberg Raw goes second. Shit could be dangerous. Justin, I can see that. I can see Raw winning the coin toss. Ward goes first. Ward has a good first round. And all of a sudden, Rosenberg Raw has his first round that we've never seen before. Please save this video if this is exactly what happens in the battle. Save this video. And then we're going to be like, Rosenberg acting different up here. What's happening? <laughs> A-Ward's going to kill Suge easy. Yeah, I, I, I think 
it's just tough, man. Suge, Suge doesn't give you much confidence after the first round to stay consistent. He tails off. Um, the majority of his career, he tails off after the first round. So, And not for nothing, I don't think Suge and Suge does fairly good against white guys to begin with, neither. Like, white guys have a field day with Shotgun Suge. Like, Sharon had a field day with Shotgun Suge. Pat Stay had a field day with Shotgun Suge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Anderson Burroughs from the Crucible battle Shotgun Suge. He had a field day with him, too. You know what I'm saying? Nunnan had a field day with Shotgun Suge. I don't care if you think Shotgun Suge lo- uh, beat Nunnan Hardcore Flavor. Nunnan won on the app. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Little Reggie says, you're getting too happy talking about your people. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get the coupe for that one. Oh shit! Let's make this shit right here. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Yo, but Lil Reggie, am I lying, bro? All these white people put up... No, yo, all these white people be looking like Kevin Herter when they when they battle Shotgun Shug. It's not my fault he lets them put up all these highlights. It's not my fault. Damn. Damn, Lil Reggie's funny as fuck, man. He is funny, bro. Um, Another battle on this card I really like. New Jersey Twerk versus um, Chef Trez on this card. What do you guys think of Twerk versus Chef Trez? Let's talk about it. It's a dope battle, says Tata. Chef 2 1. Trez is back. Twerk and Trez is fire. Twerk shows up for small leagues. No caffeine. Twerk does good. Um, I think Twerk has so much respect for Trez. He's going to show up there. With the with with the with the intentions to kill Trez, and Trez is a professional. He loves battling on small leagues. In fact, you he's already stated he prefers to battle on small leagues than the main ones, right? So you can expect Trez to be who he always is. He's consistent. There's no reason to ever doubt him. He's a great freestyler. So anything that Twerk brings to the table, Trez will 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 you know work off of and fuel himself and have a strong rebuttal in the tuck for it. I think this is going to be a really good battle. Um, I know people are probably looking at it like, oh, I don't want to see Twerk. I don't want to see Twerk. But this isn't on URL. So this is Twerk doing the essentials to rehab, to get back to being consistent, right? Battle rappers don't just have these devastating losses and just sit out for two years and come back and be better. They have to work at things again. You know what I'm saying? So what other place to work at something than a small league away from URL? And plus, this battle is booked since last year. Um, it just didn't go down because of the pandemic. So they're just kind of remaking up for something anyway. So I, I wouldn't look at it in any negative light. I'm looking forward to Twerk and Trez. I think it's a dope battle. Twerk seems to do better in small rooms. So is this a car full of one-rounders? Well, Hardcore Flavor, I know this much. I know Warden Suge is three rounds. Twerk and Trez was supposed to be three rounds when it was booked back then. So I don't know if they still kept that, but I'm pretty sure they would have. Um, I'll... From what I was told, Reed and Danny was the only one rounder on this card. Because then you also have Ines and Kaboom versus Ryder and Cuban. That's going to be a dope 2 on 2. What do you guys think? I know you guys, you know, aren't, aren't don't have a lot of equity in Ryder and Cuban. Besides the Cuban hood, Ryder, versus, Ryder and Cuban versus Ines and Kaboom. That, that's going to be fun. I think that's going to be a fun battle. Kaboom is coming outside. Rada is getting better, says Tata. We don't get a lot of equity. <laughs> we don't got a lot of equity in Kaboom or Ness neither. Kaboom, I'm already bored. Respectfully, I don't care about that battle. Yikes. See, here's the one thing, though. I'll say this, right? I think individually, right? If you had, like, Ness versus Rada, Ness versus Cuban, or Kaboom versus Cuban and Rada, like, individually, I can see where the battle doesn't attract people, right? I can see where the battle, like like Brizzy said, we wouldn't care about it. You'd be bored by it. But because they have the two-on-two dynamic, I feel like they're going to... You got the two old dinosaurs and Enos and Kaboom. It's like, oh, how can we how can we do this? Have you ever seen Enos do a two-on-two? I don't think I've seen Enos do a two-on-two. Like, I think that alone is kind of exciting because you're putting him in, in, a, in a writing style that he's never done before. So, like, 
maybe you might get something different. And for what it is, I love Enes's flow. I love Enes's flow. So if if Ness and Kaboom find a way to bring in his flow and Kaboom's punches into one as a duo, you might get some fireworks. You might just get some fireworks. As far as Ryder and Cuban, I feel like individually, of course, there's people that like them, there's people that feel like they're kind of stale, and, and I see both sides, right? But I do think together, you always increase the level of creativity, right? That's just the beauty and benefit of a two-on-two. It's really hard to make a two-on-two not be entertaining. Like, you have to really try to make a two-on-two not be entertaining. There's a lot of good teams out there. Um, more times than not, a good team comes together, uh, two people come together and make a good team. So, and plus, chemistry matters. Ryder and Cuban are close. You know what I'm saying? Chemistry matters. Ines and Kaboom have known each other for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? So I think we're going to be in a in for a very special treat with that battle. Shouts to Falcone. I seen you in the building. Salute to you. Uh, let's read some of the chat. Daddy Dirt says, facts, Ines is fire. Update guy says, I haven't watched a Kaboom battle since he's lost to Bourne. Yikes. Death could have broke them into two battles. That's true. I guess the two on two might be different than a regular battle. Says Brizzy, I'm glad. I'm glad I got you to come along, Brizzy. I'm glad. I'm glad. Tata says France can sell anything. I'm trying, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying. I'm trying. I like the car. You know what I'm saying? I will tell you guys if I don't like a battle. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you when I don't like a battle. But when I like a battle, I feel like there's something, some value in it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try to pitch it to you guys the way it should be. That was a fire face off. Uh, the last battle on it is Dub the Phenom versus Di the Henny Man. If you've been seeing Henny Man on his Twitter, he has been hashtagging Book Henny. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you, Chief. Uh, I want to see Henny. I do want to see Henny battle, but I want to see Henny battle quality opponents, respectfully. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you put Henny against, like, some people against the riot that he's supposed to beat, like Ron Compton. You put him against Dub the Phenom, like, he's going to beat Dub the Phenom, um, like, I want to see Henny Man against quality opponents. You know what I'm saying? By the way, also, URL, please drop Henny Man and Lex Luthor. Free that battle. I seen it. It's a, it's a fun battle. Free that battle, man. The people need to see that. It's a good battle. Henny been... Uh, they running. All that work for caffeine. The least they can do is give a URL play. Well, on the opposite side, Briz, Brizzy, because you do so much work, there is a valid conflict of interest. You're a host. You're you're you know you're also you also run one of the shows. Like th there is valid conflict of interest. Imagine Henny Man is in Ultimate Madness Four. Th 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 then it's like, hold on, wait, what? Huh? Weren't you just hosting these tournaments? Now you're in the tournament. Like we've never seen nothing like this before. And I think that's what makes it really interesting and special because it's like this guy is a rapper, league owner, uh, media member. Salute to Father's Day too. He's he's up there with Danny Myers, Ten Plus Kids, and all that. So also, you know, good good father as well. So like he wears many hats. So it's hard to see him take off the media hat for a second and put on the battle rapper hat. Then it's hard to see him take off the battle rapper hat and put on the league owner hat. You know what I'm saying? So it becomes one of those things where you just kind of do too much and you never necessarily like you're a jack of all trades and a master master of none. I'm not saying he's not a master of any of them, but people probably have a tough time distinguishing him from certain views. Like, if you know him as a league owner, you probably don't know him as well as a battle rapper or as a media member or vice versa, whichever one of the two or three you know him specifically for. So he's trying his best to get out of that box. And I think he'll get out of that box if leagues throw him quality names. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And plus, that, that listen, man, that, that guy does media, bro. He knows for a fact he can't afford to lose a battle because he has gonna have to. He's gonna have to roast himself. <laughs> oh man, let's read some of these chats. All that work he does. Um, they can't give him a play. People are going to cry. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Susurf does commentary. Has a battle with John John. Yeah, but Susurf didn't come into the game as a league owner as a media member. He came into he came in directly as a battle rapper on URL. You can't compare the two. Um. Got some more topics here for you guys. Let me pull this up. All right, let's talk about some Summer Madness campaigns that have been going on on the timeline. Summer Madness is coming. Calico stopped running. Conceded. How you four foot five and still ducking. Um, you guys already know, I already started the petition for 
real sick and Av. I put the tweet out there. I collect the signatures. I talked to people. Uh, I spoke to the artists. I spoke to their managers. I really trying to get this match personally. You know what I'm saying? I had to talk with Kenny Kenny. Salute to Kenny Kenny, one of the best battle rap managers in the business. And I sent this to URL. I sent it to URL. I said, hey, you know, people, people kind of want this. Just let you know what's going on. And they said, I noted. I like Real Sick versus Av. Um, another battle here I want to throw out there. I know it's going to get a lot of pushback. I know it's going to get a lot of pushback. And I'm, I'm already just trying to mentally prepare myself because I know you guys are going to reject it. However, however, I just want to point this out there. The battlers agreed to this battle, okay? Tay Rock agreed to battling Mike P on Summer Madness. Obviously, Mike P and Tay Rock, if you know the history, they were booked, they were almost booked back in 2017. Mike P and Tay Rock, Summer Madness 11. What do you guys have to say? Oh, boy. I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even did it. Uh, somebody likes it. Good, good. I like that. Gotta happen, yes. Oh, I'm, I'm, this is this is getting more positive feedback than I'm expecting. I'm happy. I'm happy. This is good. I'm proud of you guys. This is growth. This is growth right here. Look, I'm gonna just say this one. I'm gonna say this much, right? I I, I do think there's people that don't like the battle. Like for example, Hardcore Flavor saying "f out of here" with the battle. I feel that. The only thing hardcore flavor is that the two battlers agreed to want to do it and they were booked once upon a time ago. So at that moment, like, why, when do we say no if they agreed? So I, I'm just saying. Oh, snap. Here comes little Reggie. Oh, snap. Well, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll throw it back to you guys. I'll let you guys counter. We got real sick and have on the campaign. You guys agreed. We got Mike P and Tay Rock. Half of you guys agree. Half of you guys don't here. Right? I seen some yes and no's. You guys suggest me a match that you guys want to see summer madness. Throw all your summer madness dream battles. Um, we can start these campaigns going because this is where being media is important. We start to collect the the feedback, the responses, try to survey the landscape of the market, and the leagues pay attention to this. Um, Fit versus Jazz, Shine versus Hollow. That's good. <clears throat> Tay Rock versus Lou. See, I'm not mad at that because if you have Lou beating Mike, you would think Lou is more deserving of it. So that's I, I hear you. Um, K Shine versus Daylight has to happen. It's a good one. It's a real good one. Hollow versus Rum. Rum versus Lux. New Era versus New Era. Give me two names, uh, One Star 89. Like, you want to see, like, a real sick and, like, an easy? I think they're bound to happen. They're on a collision course, but I'm not necessarily sure if, if, if it should happen sooner than later. DNA versus Hollow. Geechee versus Easy. Gotti versus Easy. Back to back, Geechee versus Easy. Okay. Okay, okay. Easy versus Sick. Rum wants Lux on the rooftop. That's correct. Cal versus Easy. Mm. JC versus Sick. I'm not mad at that. That's good too. Geechee versus Calico. Easy versus Goods. Mm. That's a battle right there. That's a battle I need to like. Chess versus Easy. I wouldn't be mad at Av versus Rock. They need to have that convo. Okay. Rum versus Shine. That happened already. Um, yes, you can check it out on YouTube. It's a pretty good battle. Good is boring, says Tata. Yikes. She let it be known. We need Swamp versus T-Top. It's getting ridiculous. Well, Shotlin, if we, you know, I don't like to get, dive too deep into battle rappers' personal lives, but Swamp Battle situation couldn't make the battle. I heard he's out. Um, but I have no clue what stipulations is going on with his life. I'm sure they will get the battle rescheduled some sooner than later. Um, I'm seeing some good matches here. I'm seeing some real good matches here. I like everything that I've seen. I have no complaints. 
The one thing I'll say though, right? I do feel like this much. I'm not sure we'll get real sick and have. I'm not sure if we'll get easy chess, easy cow, easy goods, or whatever. But easy and real sick. Not not against each other, but I think those two individuals have earned summer madness. Like it, whether you give easy to chess or, or calico or Geechee or whatever, or you give sick to Av or JC or DNA, I don't care who it is. I just know easy has to be on summer madness in my opinion. Real sick has to be on summer madness in my opinion. Out of the entire class, I would say that those two are the top of the class. They have the closest sample size, similar, right? And they've improved every performance. They have a headliner under their belt. Like, they, they've they earned it, bro. They've earned it. I love Nightwing. Nightwing might be 11-1 on the app, but he's, he's lost back-to-back -back gnomes. I, I, I like Fonz a lot, and I actually really love Fonz material on the playback on his JC battle. I, I was watching it back. I'm like, yo, this is really good material, but Fonz hasn't won a battle since Ultimate Madness. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I don't know. I don't know. So, I'm really fixated on easy and real sick being on Summer Madness. That's just my opinion. Now, the real question I ask, this is tough. I still don't know the answer to this, so I'm going to let you guys answer it. Who do you think is a better battle rapper between real sick and easy? Is it sick? Is it easy? Sick, real, sick. Yikes, I don't know, man. Style clash, sick, easy, easy, easy. Look, this is tied up. I see four for each. Real sick by far. It's not even close. Preference. Jersey. Sick. Depends on the day. It's preference. Battle is uh, is easy. Rapper is sick. That's a good answer, Dale Simmons. That's a really good answer. But even then, easy Easy's a good-ass rapper, too. Are you kidding me? What? He's so good. Depends on if sick takes the pre-workout. <laughs> nah, man, chill out. If I want to spell drug, if I want to sell drugs in my head, I'm going with easy. If I want to be rapidly rap, I'm going with sick. Fair enough. Easy is an okay rapper. Saying BS is a hundred times don't make you good. Nah, bro, don't do that, man. Easy's fire. I got an extendo clip. I'll send it at you, you piece of shit. Son, son, you know how many rounds I gave up to give up my pick? It's, I forgot how it went. He said, this is draft day. You know how many rounds I gave up to get my pick? Like, that shit was crazy. Easy as fire, man. Easy as fire. What he told Rex? You get shot in your mouth, but you probably like that. You nut-ass freak bull. Oh, my God, man. Easy as fire. I'm about to go watch Easy and Rex again. <laughs> Easy as fire. Easy as heat. Um, we'll close off the show like this, guys. Um, you guys remember last week, right? We had we talked about the Lou Castro quote to Goods. He said, "I will pack Goods up." I don't know. Everybody in the chat was like, "What? No, no, no way!" No. You know what I'm saying? I, everybody has some pushback on it, right? But it's fine. Lou Castro is supposed to reach for the stars, fall in the clouds. I have no problem with him saying that. However. You know, I could, it, you know, when we post these updates, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. When we put these updates out there, people take screenshots and send it to these guys. And Goods got a word of what Lou Castro said, and Goods had a response for Lou Castro. I want to, I want to get the verbatim on this because I don't want to fuck it up. Good says, and quote, I accept the challenge. We can get in the cipher and see. I will wrap circles around Lou Castro if he thinks he can rap better than me. Yeah, that happened. Let's lower this. There we go. All right, let's, let's, let's throw it to you guys out there, man. You guys have seen Lou Castro on the beat. He has some solid uh, records. Uh, he's battled on Verbal Warzone a few times. Lou Castro versus Goods on the beat. On the beat. On a beat, in a cipher, you know what I'm saying? Instrumental in the background and all that. What do you guys think? That's a good look to get in the cipher with Goods. Bring back battle rap ciphers. Both trash on a beat. Aye, yikes. Goods is saying what he's supposed to say. Okay. Goods is a cheat code. Goods is better. Goods on the beat is better than Lou. I 
I don't know, man. Whenever I think of goods on the beat, I think of uh, you a weirdo. You a weirdo. Few real ones, more weirdos. Few real ones, more weirdos. I be running through them birds like a scarecrow. <laughs> Whoa! I don't know about Goods on the Beat, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest. That's just like that song is off the internet. That song is off the internet. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I wish there was a bigger market for on beat battles because then it would recreate a lot of previous matchups that we've seen. You could bring back people to battle on the beat, and then you could get matches like this where you get Goods and and Luke Castro on the beat and. You might get fireworks. You don't know. Goods versus T-Top on Funk's Flex. Go watch that. Hardcore Flavor Goods had T-Top looking crazy. Goods had T-Top looking crazy. I seen Goods in a lot of ciphers. He's crushed them all. Yeah, that's a fact. Goods has a legendary cipher. Anybody remembers the Lion days? In the Lion Den days with uh, Had Ice and Arsenal and Loaded Lux. Legendary cipher, legendary cipher. She says, "Say it again." Him, Head Ice, Lux, and Ars was at the top of the line of stuff. Yes, it was. That's a different. That's a different cloth. If you remember battle rap in 09, 2008, 2009, like that shit just. That shit just hit you different, man. That's that shit is crazy. Bugging if you never heard me on your speakers. Had to tell the nigga freeze. I'm a believer. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my god, I'm about to go bump that. I'm about to go bump that after this too. I'm gonna go bump that. And we're gonna watch Easy and Rex get my battle rap fix on, man. He also had that cipher with Lux and Fred. Yep, that's right. Uh, Shaolin, that shit was fire too. Dang, I make me reconsider now. Goods and Cash on the beat, man. I'm reconsidering. Reconsidering. Maybe there's more than it's just the scarecrows. All right, man. But that's pretty much all the time we got for today, man. LTBR Daily, as always, man. A um, lot of events this weekend. You know, we got Air to the Throne. We got Battle Academy, of course, you know. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with CC. you know what I'm saying? Uh, me and CC will be crushing up all the latest topics, all the latest quotes out there. I, I know everybody's seen that A Ward and P interview. P was on Angry Fan um, and addressed everything and everybody and brought up any and everybody up he brought Booker Carter he brought Eight War he brought Ace Me he brought Bill Collector it's too many quotes for me to get from that from that it was spicy but we will dissect that tomorrow of course we'll talk about the app battles just dropped too a couple battles just dropped on the app all that so salute to everybody it's tuning in as always LTBR Daily you guys make the show without us this program wouldn't exist Salute to Brizzy, M4, four time. Tata, the beloved Tata. You know what I'm saying? We got some more work to do soon, Ty. We'll be hitting you up real shortly. Damien McFly, Reggie, little Reggie, and all that. CJ Shaolin, you know, all these shout outs. Anastasio, JB the King, Hands the Great, Kiara, Pity Pat, DC, One Man Star, J Line, J Green, J Light. <laughs> There's a lot of J's in here. Slick, Slick Vic. Hardcore flavor is always the antagonist, the pessimist, but keeps it real. He tells his he tells his truth. Dale Simmons, much love, y'all.